Hello and welcome to another week of 52 weeks. This is week nine. Right, this week we're going to be looking at some long-range planning. We're still in chapter two, land use. So when we look at the long-range planning, we're looking at downtown stakeholders. These are the large stakeholders and understanding where um, there's possibilities for expansion. And last episode, we were looking at where uh, the new movement could be for the new central business district. This is up on 6th Street. Uh, with that potential. And, uh, and this diagram was pretty interesting because it looks at potential government growth, innovation into the neighborhoods, and then also health uh, health center. And these are the bigger pictures uh, and the larger owners. Um, I did want to mention that there's one key piece in one of the pages of the land use. So this is for the Harristown Development Corporation. And this is for 45 years. Uh, HDC has controlled the vast majority and development of the city's downtown. HDC has effectively completed its intended function of implementing the 1974 downtown plan. So what that's saying is that with what was set up, it took 45 years to get to what the intended plan was. And now it's a point of uh, new innovation and transformation. There needs to be another step. And this is why it is essential, it's essential to get into comprehensive planning. So when we look at the long range planning, looking at market squares, ways to connect along the Paxton Watershed and uh, the Norfolk Southern Railway. So this diagram is looking at that and bringing connectivity between east and west. So this should be thought of in our long range planning. The thing to think about is the historic nature of Market Street was a corridor. It's always linked the west shore and east shores together. It's also been a passage back uh, or further east uh, past Harrisburg's as well. So this corridor is extremely important. The historic connector that it, uh, one, it, it's experienced in sequences. Um, if you start with the cemetery and go from the cemetery gatehouse the whole way down towards the river as you descend the, from the hill in elevation down to the river and some amazing views. And then equally as important is coming back up from the uh, gateway that happens uh, Market Street, Cross City Island and uh, into the Market Square and then back up uh, to the hill uh, further up into the gatehouse to the end of the Market Street corridor. So this is a good thing to be understanding the geography and how we go through space. So it's a really a physical cross-section of the city and very interesting one. Um, it'd be an interesting art project to see the sequence uh, that happens and the diversity of physicality, uh, people, locations, neighborhoods, as that uh, transcends down from elevation, high elevation to lowering elevation. The uh, long-range planning, understanding the Hill District, this meander, uh, this is where a place of innovation can happen. And this is framed so if you were th going from the city up into Allison Hill, um, this is where you'd see it. And you get to see connections to 83, the way this is uh, gray out, where uh, all the meanders uh, activities proposed. The thing to understand here is the meander is just a name given to this. Um, nothing's written in stone. The idea is that this could be an area of concentration working within the neighborhoods and working with the neighborhood residents to really see a way of how the connections on 83 coming in through uh, 17, 19th, 17th, 13th, and 2nd and 3rd streets off 83. Uh, this is why it's important to look at the widening of 83. It's not just um, the swath of, of space and land that's being cut up. But So the question here is how does the city really influence the highway instead of vice versa. Right now, we're in a situation where the highway is pushing into the city, and that's not a good way to, for approach of PennDOT. Uh, they should have learned a lesson long time ago on this. Uh, we really feel like the, the commuters that are running through here have their say, and uh, rather than understanding what happens in the uh, area, residential areas around 83. So when we look at this meander as this concept, it's really this place of innovation. Allison Hill has this really on amazing potential, uh, working, talking with students and community leaders around here, residents that are wanting this long-term investment. So the idea is like, this is a grassroots thing that can happen. We want to look at uh, companies that are coming in here, small business incubation, makerspace, activities, startup enterprises. In this area, this is could be focused on um, communication, technology, logistics, health, nutrition, research. There's also some creativity as well uh, that can happen. This park incorporates a variety of food distribution and food service facilities to serve the neighborhood, city, and region. So another idea in this is that this could be a marketplace up in here that could be much different than Broad Street Market it, it, because we have a lot of diversity, various ethnic groups. Uh, this could be the place where a lot of different food types could be and really celebrated in this part of the, of the city and make it unique for the region. 
All right, when we look at the River District, this is a, a dialogue here. It seeks to solve the decades-long uh, disconnection in Harrisburg that happens, and this is within the infrastructure planning, the transportation planning, and urban design. These are the things that are disconnected. So even the way the 6th and 7th Street Corridor was uh, laid out or uh, proposed was so disconnected, uh, not connected to the community, just kind of sprung. This was back in 2016, and not even understood in, a, in the context of uh, long-range uh, planning. And even though they may be doing it, it's not a integrated approach or holistic approach. And then you even throw in the second, uh, second street um, in that conversion. That's a whole other thing. Even though it gets unloaded and at least thought through in a, uh, a cohesive way and also informing the, pr the public in a way that it continues to do dialogue and uh, evolve. Again, these diagrams are really important because it seems, shows you the multimodal transit. This is the proposal of a bus rapid transit, BTR, um, that's here. We've got the Paxton Creek and that influence and all the connectivity that can happen between the Division McClay areas of the city. So McClay Street Corridor, just as the Market Street Corridor was important, the McClay Street Corridor is also equally important. Um, we can strengthen a multimodal connection of Camp Curtin to the east suburbs. Um, we're looking at the uh, areas from the Governor's Residence to the uh, 7th Street Commercial, uh, McClay Street Bridge, the Paxton Watershed, State F uh, Farm Complex, Arsenal Boulevard, and then Old 22. All right, another east-west connection is looking at the Division Street Corridor. Again, the linking between um, the Riverfront Park, William Penn Campus, 7th Street Plaza, Division Street Bridge, uh, the, which is proposed. We got the Paxton Watershed that's there. The uh, connection to Hack as well, uh, State Farm Show Building and Parking, and up to the uh, proposed Sycamore Street Roundabout. Which this would be interesting to look at how that connects back to the rest of the city from the south and um, the Clay Street connection. So when we look at the River District, uh, Camp Curtin Civic Spaces are important. Emerald Square, Atlas Street Bikeway, Linear Park, Emerald Playgrounds. This is just an example of what we could think of in some of the neighborhoods or between um, the main moves of the comp plan, how do neighborhood, the small area plans get planned out, and where green spaces or pocket parks can happen, what can become a green linear park, and we think rethink some of these streets that are there so that become more pedestrian. In the, the River District, we have Midtown and Market District. You know, in 1856, the market has always been this local hub, regional hub for commerce. The 1950s, then we got six street super blocks that happened. This is where uh, Jackson Lick and also Ben Franklin Elementary School is at, these larger blocks that begin to form, and even up where the federal courthouse is, these larger uh, future government expansion. That was in the idea on uh, some of the earlier plans of Harrisburg. In the 1960s, something interesting happened in the nation, we were looking at historic preservation, so there was this move of understand our, the heritage of buildings and things that were important. We just don't go uh, and knock buildings over and just put up new. We were going and experiencing these large super blocks. There's an interesting story to follow. The uh, Jim Rouse uh, discussion of Faneuil Hall is in there. That's on page 39. You can read up on, on that dialogue when, so he was asked to come in and consult about the market and the residents really weren't interested in that. And so that kind of, that fell apart. The uh, 1960s continue to move and push against urban renewal, which is good because we were trying to keep things uh, small blocks and very human scale. Imagine if things hadn't been stopped. Uh, imagine what blocks we'd have today, larger blocks that were consolidated and we had larger buildings on blocks in the 80s, development focused on single-use housing and changed 3rd Street to an unbalanced retail. This is a very good point that was made by Matt Frederick in his discussion last year. And an unbalanced street, so we had a typical commercial street, which is 3rd Street all the way up until Riley, from Forrester to Riley. And whenever we put her residential on one side, um, it's going to be a difficult uh, street to to keep me, uh, retail on one side. The activity is just not as much, and it's just a, uh, an odd street to be on as, for, as a connector road that links back to downtown to even going the whole way up to, uh, up to Division Street. And now as we're looking at Midtown and Market District, we've got this, this is a proposal just looking at what happens. We introduce new types of housing, and we also have a Riley Square of a place where it's a common play, uh, place to land uh, between Hack Midtown and the upper part of uh, beyond, I should say, 4th Street and, and 5th Street and beyond. And the other thing that's interesting is the Muse housing, you know, the need for a different types of housing, not a, a single resident ownership and also single residents 
we need to mix this up and provide affordability. So Muse Housing is one of these ways to do it. I encourage everybody to go and search Muse Housing in other cities and what that looks like. These are for facilities for economic development and job training that have a mix in here. There's co-housing, collaborative housing, agricultural workers and vendor related live work units could actually supply itself back to Broad Street Market and having some of those connections that are there. These are things we need alternatives to the housing type. We'll get into that in chapter five. The river and the hill districts also need uh, a incubators. This is important to think about in business development. Currently there's an incubator, there's actually three uh, co-working spaces around Harrisburg. The the one that main one that's in Midtown is at Startup. The other one is out on um, 441 uh, off of Paxton Street, the workplace hub. And there's another one at East Park Drive. Technically not in Harrisburg, but out in the uh, the suburbs. But these incubators are uptown in the academic and research areas, and the meander could be business and food. Again, these are just proposals of what could be focused and around here, and looking at if these were ideas that were put out there, how they might be developing and incubate um, uh, future growth. So this is the end of this week's chapter in the long-range planning. So next week we'll be looking at finally wrapping up the chapter 2 and we'll be looking at the percentage of uh, land use typologies that are in Harrisburg and some final thoughts about the land use chapter.